Hello, this is Sergeant Satire, and you are currently watching the Mac and Me movie review, but with director's commentary. And if you don't know what that means, it means you're basically going to listen to me, the person who made it, talk to you for about 20 minutes about how I made it. And it would probably be much more interesting if you actually already watched the video, so I would suggest that you do that. And yeah, so here we go. Yep, that was the intro I use for most of my videos, and there is the title slide that I designed. It took me about four hours or three hours to make that. I just took a bunch of images and I used paint. I don't use something really uh, high fancy to make those uh, title slides. I just use paint. I uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, this was actually the first thing I did. Uh, as opposed to the bonsai video, where the last scene in the movie was the first thing I shot. The first scenes in this movie are the first things I shot. Um, well, I did that because it would just be easier. It's easier that way, just because if you've seen the video, you know what I'm talking about. The, it gets a little bit more complex near the end with what's going on. So this was one of the much more easy things to do, so I decided I'd do that first. Um, yeah, this was an idea I had early on. This is one of the first ideas I had um, while I was making the bonsai video. I said, um, the Mac and Me VHS, like the bonsai board game, is going to have like these mystical kind of powers, and it should be able to like change the VHSs. That's, that was the idea, the, one of the first ideas that I had. And everything kind of branched off from there. I'm like, okay, well, how about I walk over and pick up a bunch more VHSs, and that's usually how it works with me. People ask me how I get the ideas. I, I usually just get one, and I start with one, and then I go from there. And I wrap the story around that. Yeah, right there was a Bonsai, a little reference to the last video, and this, the Iron Man 2, it wasn't that bad, it was just a, a joke. Um, uh, it depends, like, between my friends, we say that Iron Man 2 was the most okay movie of all time. Because it was. It was just so okay. It wasn't that great. It wasn't bad. It was okay. But, um, the joke I was trying to get across, along with that one, just to, like, everybody else in the world, was, um, I find people, uh, whined about it a bit too much. Iron Man 2 really wasn't that bad. So that was the joke. Like, uh, I got afraid of it for a second, and I'm like, okay, it's not that bad. Because it really wasn't. <laughs> yeah, those, um, the shots where I have Mac and me just, um, like, looking at me from, like, a desk or a dresser. I had just a bunch of those. Like, I think I spent one day just putting Mac and me on top of stuff or beside stuff and just filming it there. And then in editing, I went back and picked out the best ones, the ones that were um, the coolest angles, I guess. This was fun too. It's fun to beat the crap out of myself <laughs> by um, board games and VHSs and inanimate objects. On my old channel, The Flying Cow, I got beat up by apples and my own thumb. Yeah, I didn't actually punch it, no, and I didn't actually smash it into my face. Uh, this scene was a little bit longer, there was a lot more um, struggling, but um, when I was playing around with like, the footage and the editing, uh, it just kind of, like if I would have used all the footage, the scene would have come out to about a minute long. And that's um, a bit too long to be struggling with a VHS that is possessed. Um, it actually, even to me, it kind of got like annoying after a while. I was just out there on the floor holding this VHS, grunting and fighting with it. It, it would have gotten irritating because if it if it it would annoy like me, the person making it, it would definitely annoy the people who were gonna watch it. So I think it was very wise for me to cut out a good chunk of that footage. Especially from McDonald's and Coca-Cola. Here we have How so? 
just a basic overview of uh, the movie so far. Basically just saying how much of an E.T. ripoff that it is. Because it is. It really is. I don't know if anybody else who would, is in, gonna like watching this review has seen it. Probably has. Some people probably want to know if anybody else thought the movie was total garbage and they wanted to see like a review. So, but the reason I made this review was um not it. It's, it was to review the movie, but it was more um. It's kind of become like a running joke in my life. I always make references to Mac and me with my friends and stuff about how it's the worst movie ever made and the only thing it taught me was how not to make a movie so because I remember when I saw um, Paul earlier this year that was that movie with the, the alien voiced by Seth Rogen uh, the theater was packed there was a lot of people like I don't think there was a dry seat in the house but uh, uh me and my five no my I forget how many friends went I think we were five um uh, we were just sitting there and there was this one point in the movie where they referenced Mac and me and out of all the possible alien movies they could have referenced they could have referenced you know E.T. or Predator or Alien they referenced Mac and me and we all start laughing our heads off and the real funny part was that we were the only ones laughing there was this joke in the movie and only five people in the audience laugh so we probably looked like we were insane but yeah that when I saw that in the movie, I'm like, okay, I gotta get around to making this Mac and Me review at some point. Because i I'd been talking about it for years, and people were always, you know, saying, when are you gonna do it? So, I figured it was about time to do it. Anyway, on to the next topic. Um, yeah, it, the video is 20 minutes. Um, which is fine, you know, when you're watching it, but when I have to talk about it. There's a lot I could talk about, and then some stuff might get left out. Yeah, there was the TIE Fighter sound. I like to make references to movies I like. So, no copyright infringement intended there, uh, George Lucas, but the TIE Fighter sound is pretty damn awesome, so I wanted to use it very briefly. And once again, you can see all my posters in the back. I'm a big comic book fan. And I got knocked out by a possessed VHS tape. Just another day in the life of Sergeant Satire. And here's where it gets kind of ridiculous. Like, because at the end of Banzai, for those of you who have watched Banzai, spoilers if you haven't, uh, the ending, like the whole video builds up to this final battle of me trying to kill a board game with a super soldier. Um, people thought that was outrageous, and they, some of my friends said uh, that was ridiculous, in, in a good way, it was uh, ridiculously funny, it was um, over the top. So I'm like, okay, I can, I can make it more ridiculous, and they just kind of said, what? No, you can't. <laughs> and I think I kind of did. You got this VHS trying to take over the world and get rid of every other movie that is not itself, so people only have... Mac and me as an option for a movie. Um, yeah, so this scene was also an idea I had very early on, just like um, it being in all the VHS cases. Uh, I wanted there to be kind of like a dream state, or because I, I know I was going to have some fight scene kind of things where I'd fight Mac and me, and I wanted to get like knocked out and ended up in my own mind or something that the idea of me being like in my mind came in later originally it was just like a trance like a vision and this whole thing was way way shorter uh, but I figured it would be way more fun if I uh, played with it a little bit more uh, so yeah I got Steve poor Steve whenever he's over I always say uh, hey we're gonna go film something and he's like can't we just like sit down and watch a movie or play a game? And I said, you're here, you, you, I need to film something. And he always helps, he uh... So... Thankful for that. I haven't, yeah. He's playing my common sense. And he found that funny. 
because for him to be my common sense, he'd, he said I, I'd be screwed. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know. I thought he would play that character nicely because in some other videos we made and in real life, we always, um, when we talk, we end up taking on these characters just to bug each other and sometimes he would like play this really cocky, um, arrogant kind of person. Like, and I wanted him to do that for that character. I don't know why. It, I just thought it would fit. This was um, actually kind of difficult to shoot because we were short on time because he had to be somewhere. I forget where. And we forgot to bring a tripod or something to put the camera down on. So the original way that I had written this scene to be shot, I had to scrap within a few seconds and come up with a completely new way of shooting it very fast. So we kind of just um, handed the camera back and forth. So I'd film him talking, he'd film me talking. And we'd use things from in the area, like we'd use a bunch of sticks and rocks to hold the camera up at an angle. Um, that's what we had to do to get the movie done. Uh, yeah, there was a Carol joke there. Uh, I don't know how many people would get that, because it was in my Minor Annoyances video. There's a character called Peter Patrick Lawrence, which I'm also playing again here. And um, there's a joke in that video, a running joke, which will become a running joke, because I plan to... Um, uh, start making more minor annoyances videos of his wife Carol being the reason that his life sucks and the reason for anything he'll f anything that happened like um there was a car accident or uh, a VHS is taken over the world it's Carol's fault it doesn't matter if it wasn't he just finds a way that it is and see this joke it doesn't have to make sense it's just um it's a running joke a lot of movies and TV shows have them. So I figured I should make one too. Uh, so yeah, now we're cutting into the review. I, um, looking back, like, um, I like how, because this video has been out for about a week now, I guess. But, um, I don't think I spent n enough time reviewing the movie. Like, I showed why it was dumb, but I should have gone a bit more in depth. Like in this chain, uh, chain, uh, scene in particular, uh, where he falls off the um, the cliff in his wheelchair. It's a very infamous scene that, uh, yeah, I had to cut a lot of stuff out. Because the reason, because I have to balance stuff, um, there was the own st my own story I was trying to uh, show here with the Mac and me trying to take over the world. And then I also had to have the review, um, I think about seven or eight minutes of the review is the the actual review and the rest of it is um me and my sketch comedy which is good but i would like to done a bit more but then again i have to know how how much of each thing to put in because i figured um just me talking about uh the movie for too long would have gotten boring because i like to switch it up but yeah uh, i don't know if you get what i'm trying to say but I, uh, when I make my movies, I'm always at, at war with myself about my own decisions, and I'm, I have a real hard time, uh, get it, um, like, uh, this, trying to decide on the final product that you will see. Uh, like, the one you, and the Mac and Me review you ended up watching wasn't the final one. I ended up going through a couple of different tries there. But, yeah. As I was just talking about right there, uh, the dance scenes, just to clarify, I don't think every movie, like, it's useless. Dance scenes, like, some of them are okay, like, where they're done properly. Like, um, I recently rewatched The Breakfast Club, and there's a dance scene, but that's fine, because they're a bunch of teenagers, and, you know, they're trying to find something to do, and, um, yeah, it just worked. It was an entertaining scene, too. But other movies, like Mac and Me and Spider-Man 3, and um, it ju it's just not necessary. You don't need to put in a dancing scene in a, a Spider-Man movie. Yeah, there's no point to that. And just on another side note, I didn't find Spider-Man 3 all that bad. Just like Iron Man 2, it was okay. 
it was it wasn't as bad as people made it out to be. We never have to worry about anything um, like this ever again. So but yeah, my biggest gripe though about the dancing scenes is that um, DreamWorks, they made a lot of good movies, um, but ever since Shrek, they have this formula that they stick to, where they have like uh, music that the parents knew, and they have like a dance scene and talking animals and fart jokes and all that stupid crap, but you know, kids like it, and it's not terrible. The, the movies aren't terrible that they make now, but, you know, they're just kind of repetitive. And the dance scenes just bother me. I don't know, they're just kind of dumb. But, whatever. It's not the end of the world. Uh, yeah, I was trying to be all artsy-fartsy here. Because I was getting back to um, college soon. I think this was the last weekend before I was heading back to filmmaking and studies at college. And we, we study a lot of those, you know, independent kind of movies. So I figured I should probably get my brain into that mindset. And um, I was trying different filming angles that were used. And I was looking into some good directors and Kenneth Brana, who did um, Thor recently. He, um, he used a lot of that specific kind of angle which I like that I like that angle so I wanted to use it making movies is fun yeah this scene too was also very long that I had to cut down because how long could you possibly watch me suit up when it's essentially just me putting on a sweater my improv sweater because as I've mentioned in some other videos, I did improv, which is like, whose line is it anyway? With Steve, by the way. Steve, the guy you see in all those videos, which you saw in this video, he did improv with me too, so. We're very good at um, playing off each other when we make uh, movies and when we did stage acting. Uh, it's always very witty, very quick. <laughs> I love that line, because... Uh, after I shot that, I, I said out loud, I, I just, how am I prepared for a giant VHS destroying the planet? How do you possibly predict that and prepare for that? Well, in the miracle of editing, you use stock footage from movies and your favorite TV show of all time. Because people were asking me where I got this footage from, and a good chunk of it, most of it, was from a Reboot. Which, as I've stated, I stated in the Bonsai video, is my favorite TV show of all time. It is genius. I love that show. And I really miss it. And I, uh, like the last season, they ended on such a cliffhanger. I'm getting off track here, but they gotta bring it back. If, if the people who made Reboot ever watch this, bring it back. It was such a brilliant show. And here we go, the last scene. Which was the last thing I shot. Which is very rare in movies in general that things are kind of shot like as they are in the movie. It's usually shot all of it out of order, but it's just the way it worked out, what would have been easiest. But yeah, this scene, that took a couple of tries. Just like walking into the room and looking up at Iron Man 2, which was a reference back to the beginning of the video. Which, um, the moral there was, yes, kids there's a message and a moral to this video a basic one but there's a moral uh some things just aren't worth the uh the um the whining and the the, the hassle people complaining over iron man 2 it wasn't that bad of a movie because when you have stuff like mac and me it's really not that bad would you rather watch mac and me or iron man 2 iron man 2 you know wasn't a great movie it wasn't as good as the first one but it was still entertaining so people need to stop you know complaining about every movie like not everything's gonna be fantastic but just take it as it is you know enjoy it and yep right there I was leaving it open because in the end of the bonsai video apparently mr. dummy up guy gets blown into uh, pieces but it would appear that he didn't or did he hmm very mysterious you'll find out what happens what's going on a lot of questions are answered so you better make sure you watch Bonsai and Mac and me. And yeah, better wrap this up quick. There was all the special thanks. Check out those channels, please. Because uh, they're all great.
And yeah, that's it. Sergeant Satire 2011. And I'm predicting, well, I'm taking a break from, a slight break from making movie, like a movie of this scale. Uh, Mac and me, like a 20 minute thing. I'm going to be going back to like my old stories and little other things, but expect uh, the third part of this trilogy thing to be out either by the end of the year or early next year. It'll be the worth the wait, trust me. Yeah, so we're on a black screen now, so I guess that's it. So this is Sergeant Satire, and hope you enjoy the this commentary.